Welcome back to Business Live. These are challenging times which require radical measures. The finance minister said this today as he presented the 2022 budget. Ken Ofriata said government was looking to introduce innovative ways of raising revenue. Now, government has introduced an electronic levy of 1.7% on transactions covering mobile money payments, bank transfers, merchant payments and inward remittances. The move according to the finance minister is to ensure that there is adequate funds to support the digitalization policies of the government and improve the country's fight against cyber security or cyber crimes as well as address the unemployment challenges. Mr. Speaker, COVID-19 contributed to the acceleration of the digitalization of Africa. Data from the Bank of Ghana confirms a growing trend in online trade. The data showed that between February 2020 and February 2021 alone, Ghana saw an increase of over 120% in the value of digital transactions compared to 44% for the period February 2019 to February 2020. Apart from the convenience online trading offers, the surge has happened globally was primarily due to the increase in the use of digital platforms as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Total value of transactions for 2020 was estimated to be over 500 billion Ghana cities compared to 78 billion cities in 2016, just five years ago. While total money um, subscribers and active mobile sub money users have grown by an average rate of 18% and 16% respectively between 20, 2016 and 2019. Mr. Speaker, it has become clear that, these, that there is this enormous potential to increase tax revenue by bringing into the tax bracket transactions that will be best defined as being undertaken in the informal economy. After considerable deliberation, government has decided to place a levy on all electronic transactions to widen the tax net and rope in, rope in the informal sector. This shall be known as the electronic transaction levy or e-levy. Electronic Ele Mr. Speaker, electronic transactions covering, mo covering mobile money payments. Mr. Speaker, Honourable Members, order, order. Electronic mobile money payments, bank transfers, merchant payments, and e from remittances will be charged at an applicable rate of 1.75%, which will be borne by the sender, except inward remittances, which will be borne by the recipient. Mr. Speaker, to safeguard efforts be made to enhance financial inclusion and protect the vulnerable, all transactions that add up to 100 Ghana CDs or less per day which is approximately 3,000 Ghana cities per month, will be exempt from this levy. Meanwhile, government has scrapped all tolls on public roads and bridges with immediate effect. Our roads are being fixed. It is true that more roads have been fixed and are being fixed over the last five years than any relative period in the entire history of our nation. We even want to do a lot more, and this budget will cater for this. That is why for decades, governments after governments imposed and maintained tolls on some public roads to raise funds for road construction and maintenance. This is the situation in many countries. However, over the years, the toll imposed and impacted negatively on productivity. The conjunction generated at the tolling points, besides resting Creating these inconveniences also leads to pollution in and around the vicinities. To address these challenges, 
government has abolished all tolls on public roads and bridges. Well, that was the Finance Minister, Ken Ofoyata, joining me with analysis is lead tax partner, Deloitte Ghana, George Ankuma. Grateful you could join us tonight. And so, radical measures enough to show up revenue. Um, I mean, how effective is scrapping the road tolls and uh, taxing electronic transactions? You're muted, sir. Hello. Okay. Um... Thank you, Darren. Um, so um, I will start from the electronic transactions tax or levy that has just been introduced or proposed by the minister. Um, if you look at the minister's analysis, he did mention that um, online transactions um, between 2019 to 2020 is estimated um, to be about 500 billion Ghana cities. So that tells you that if this levy is to come in and we are in 2021 going to 2022, uh, this estimate of 500 billion Ghana, we should be hovering around uh, maybe 700 to 800 billion by now. If you look at the growth from 2017, when we started this whole um, online transactions uh, to now. And so you see that in 2021, 2022, uh, these figures are, are more likely to be significant um, in terms of the values, getting closer to probably 800 billion. Now, even with the 500 billion, if you look at it and you take the 1.75% mm. um, as, as a levy, then it means government is going to rake in as much as um, over 8.75 billion uh, Ghana cities in, in levies. Um, but also, it's important for us to get some more clarity, uh, probably by the time the implementation starts, as to whether this levy is actually going to be on the value of transaction or is going to be on the value of the service fee or service charge on, on, on e-services. Because it was clear from the budget statement that it will be on bank transfers, it will be on mobile money and, 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 and uh, what have you. So, so it means that we have to now ask the question, is it on the value okay, right. of the transaction, actual value of the transaction, or we are talking of the service that I receive that I'm to pay tax on? Because if it's on the value, then uh, a bit more questions need to be answered now. Because if um, my salaries are paid through the bank and I, I transfer part of my salary, it means my salary is going to now be taxed again um, because I've transferred to some other persons for whatever purpose. So um, I believe that uh, a bit more clarity in terms of what constitutes the tax base um, for the levy to be charged on uh, will come by the time of the implementation. But at hindsight, if, if this is to be taxed at, um, with the value of the transaction, then you estimate government to be getting um, 10 to 12 billion in 2020, 2022 um, as, as revenue estimates just from, from this study, if it's implemented. So just before we came on the air, um, I received a call from a friend who was asking, so while you're removing the taxes or, or the road tolls and you are introducing the e-levy, and he was just wondering, aren't we losing so much by abolishing the tolls on the roads and bridges? How does that make up with the e-levy? Right. So, so if you look at the minister's statement, he did mention that the revenue from Route Two was about eighty, uh, about um, eighty-seven billion uh, million Ghana cities, which was which was quite small. If you look at the effort that goes in in collecting mm -hmm. Route Two, I was looking at um, the possibility of modifying the means of collection. If if there is a, so much leakage at the at the point of collection. Uh, we look at other means of collecting the road too and not completely um, abolishing it because I believe that certain roads must be able to pay for itself. Um, in fact, I've been thinking around um, this as well because the government did mention that there's going to, the minister did mention uh, in his budget statement that there's going to be a PPP arrangement that is a public private partnership um, in terms of certain roads that he mentioned. Uh, I think the motorway was one of such rules that, that PPP arrangements are to come in. Under this PPP arrangement, what is the expectation um, for, for the private, private investor coming in? How are they going to recover um, the, the, the funds that they are coming to 
uh, put into this. Is it going to be by road two if we say we abolish it? How are they going to recover? So I think that we could be looking at some other ways of collecting the road tools instead of completely abolishing it. Um, could we have considered uh, potentially adding it, um, paying upfront? Um, could we have considered um, somehow digitizing it such that as you utilize the road, uh, it captures you? And I've mentioned that this is done elsewhere. We have, uh, for instance, um, N1 in South Africa, I have used that road. Um, anytime you cross, um, it beeps. There, there's a, there's a, um, there, there's a token that has been fixed there. It beeps and your car is captured. And so at the end of a particular period, uh, you have a bill as far as your road to is concerned and you pay. Okay, that could be one, one, one option. It could have been part of probably um, including it or considering uh, insurance companies supporting government to be able to um, arrange for how to collect the road to uh, alongside payment of insurance or whatever, um, instead of completely abolishing uh, road to. But I believe that government has some other good reasons uh, for uh, uh, proposing to abolish the road to. But I think uh, we could have looked at more efficient way of collecting the road to, and some of roads should be able to uh, pay for itself. Right. And well, uh, I mean, you talked about the, the fact that we need some more clarity on whether the the charge, the e-levy, is going to be on the value or um, the service it, in itself. But I'm also thinking, what's going to be the impact or implication for um, us who use uh, these financial services, um, who, who transact businesses with the banks and, and mo mobile money uh, payments? What is going to be the impact? Yes, so, so like I said earlier, if the tax this becomes the value of the of the transaction that that I'm entering into then um, I think that uh, we already have some service charges that are being um, charged by the service providers uh, once you go into such transactions and so if government now seeks to tax the actual uh, finance or the actual money that you are transferring I think that there is there is that potential risk of um, Money's now instead of uh, using using the the digital money approach or the online platforms, uh, possibility of people now wanting to avoid the tax by now doing more fiscal transactions, which we have been trying to run away from, and I think that we've come very far. But imposing tax on the actual transaction value uh, could lead us to um, people uh, looking at avoiding avoiding because already. After the budget is read, you, you hear people say, hey, now there's Momo tax, there's Momo tax, and that is what everybody is saying. It's not just on Momo, it includes uh, financial transactions uh, that are actually being, being done by the financial institutions as well. So, so it means that if you, um, does it mean if you issue deduct money or if you pick ATM and withdraw money at the ATM point, um, that is going to have, if I withdraw a thousand cities, I pay tax on my thousand cities I have withdrawn from my own account. Okay. Uh, these are some of the questions, and I think that uh, that is the potential impact that we should be looking at. Exactly, because I was concerned about what this could mean for financial inclusion. Thanks so much for your time, uh, George Ankwa, who is lead tax partner at Deloitte Ghana. Uh, there's more to talk about. Uh, for instance, the good forecast for the year 2022. We'll be telling you more about that right here on Business Live as we continue to analyze the budget in the coming days. You're watching Business Live. We're taking a short break. We'll be back with some more stories. Welcome back to Business Live, and we anticipated that the 2022 budget will be heavy on job creation as well as entrepreneurship. To address the unemployment challenge, Finance Minister Ken Ofoyata announced you start to support young entrepreneurs to launch and operate their own businesses. We will address the challenges our existing and aspiring entrepreneurs face. These challenges include access to credit and finance, regulatory and tax burdens, lack of skills as well as mentorship. We will do this whilst intensifying our efforts to support the private sector to expand and create jobs. Mr. Speaker, 
this understanding of the youth employment challenge, as well as extensive consultations of stakeholders, including youth associations and educational institutions across the country, have led to the development of what we call the Youth Start Initiative. Youth Start Initiative. All right, and so we'll be delving more into the Youth Start Initiative in subsequent bulletins. But time now to bring you the Joy Business one because when Boy and my team made her first hibiscus tea bag, she was so excited she took a hundred pictures. But she started her business, Nutri Health Foods and Beverages, during the height of the COVID 19 pandemic when it was obviously challenging to run a business. The Joy Business Van versus her production center today. The Joy Business Van is brought to you by Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank, and MTN everywhere you go. Hello Joy Business Van, my name is Boahima Intim and I'm the Innovation and Business Development Lead at Nutri Health Foods and Beverages. Welcome to our production center. Starting a hibiscus tea business was not exactly a plan for Boahima in team before the COVID-19 pandemic. She couldn't have imagined it, but the pandemic, despite its toll, was also a silver lining. Let's rewind to about a year ago when the pandemic was at its peak. Um, we were home and there was a lot of time on our hands. We also wanted to explore a business that would do well in a pandemic. And this came up. Um, I looked back on the way we have been healthy before orthodox medicine and decided that it's time to put what we know together in a way that will satisfy our clients and cause them to drink health instead of just drinking ordinary tea. Hibiscus is found in tropical climates around the world. Its flower has become very popular because it is medicinal. The flower has a reddish color which is full of antioxidants. What antioxidants do for your body is that they oxygenate your blood, allow your blood to flow better, removes all the impurities from your system, allow your organs to function better. It's rich in vitamin C, contains minerals such as flavonoids and has laxative properties. Bwahima thought it would be a healthy beverage at a time people were looking to build immunity and stay healthy during the pandemic. Commonly called sobolo here in Ghana, the dried hibiscus flowers would normally be soaked in warm water, brewed and then served chilled with some sweetness. But Bwahima wanted her products to be different. We started off with a loose tea which was much easier to do. We didn't need to blend. There wasn't a machine and all of that. And, and I remember the first tea bag we made, um, we didn't have a machine, so it was manually filled. I, I saw on Instagram that somebody had brought in tea bags. I started jumping. Um, I called, I ordered, I think the first day I ordered 5,000 pieces immediately. And then I brought it home, began to experiment, to do the pilot, to fail, I mean, to get to the state where it is now a final product. The first tea bag I made, I think I took a hundred pictures or more. I was so excited. Bwahima began to do a lot more. She shows us what goes into production, beginning with the sorting area for the dried hibiscus flowers, the first stage of the production process where impurities are removed, next to the dryer, then processing. So we would process the hibiscus, we would process the other things that we are adding. It may be your ginger, your prekese, your cinnamon and everything else. That is done, then it moves into the third, the fourth phase, which is when we bag the loose tea. Some people want to brew their tea, so we, we have that option. So you just we just bag the, the not so finely processed materials. Then it moves to stage five for the tea bags. We have to further process and refine into fine textures. And so we put it in the blending machine. We blend it into a consistency that is okay for our the filling machine. <laughs> 
Then the filling machine backs the tea. Wahima and her team have been able to come up with 10 varieties of the hibiscus tea, including pineapple, ginger, mint, orange, a whole lot more. Her strategy to make her tea products appealing to consumers is through her attractive packaging. This is what we started with. Um, we got the, 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 the plastic pouches and then we filled them with a loose tea. And then you would have to get a strainer, a coffee maker or whatever to brew the tea, the old fashioned way. Um, but we quickly had to move on from there. So in about a week, we are coming up with tins, very beautiful tins, even for our loose tea with aluminum foil because we are very, very conscious of our environment. We, don't, we want uh, material that are biodegradable, that is friendly to the environment. So we are quickly moving on from this. Then we went to that, the tea bags. Um, you realize that these are manually filled and they are strained, so you just pull and tire because we didn't have a machine. But now, Bahima has acquired a machine for packaging and is boosting production. She's now able to produce about 300 tins a day. Let me share a little secret with you. We have different colors of the tins. Um, we, we, don't, we don't use them at random. We think through what is going into the tin to determine the color that we use. I mean, we are that concerned. I mean, we are that particular. Um, Red will be for ginger, for example. It's fiery, it's hot. You want to see red and think that what I'm going to drink will kick me up. Yellow is fruity, so we'll do pineapple, we'll do orange. So we moved on to this. And then we have a machine that will now automatically fill and seal. Wahima does most of her marketing on social media and has started to stock supermarkets. Production is done for the day. Wahima heads to her office to take stock of the day's work. She's currently concentrating on the e-commerce site being created for her. She's a fan of hibiscus tea herself. We asked her which of the products is her favorite. My favorite is hibiscus ginger, um, but typically I would mix it. I would mix hibiscus ginger with moringa or pineapple. I like the punch and the kick that uh, ginger gives. And I like the slight sweetness of um, the pineapple, so I mix and match. But when I'm trying to lose weight, which is all the time, then I'll take senna in the evenings before I sleep because it helps to clear the, the fat up in my body. Bohemia's middle name is Innovation. Oh yes, and as you can imagine, she has big plans for the future. Initially, we want to increase the variance and the types and the deliverables locally um, but we our sites really are on the african market and then also in in shops outside of ghana especially whole food shops and um, health shops across the world but we we want to take advantage of after and open up our production and make sure that the the, the one billion population in africa um, becomes uh, our target market. Now that's big. The Joy Business Van was brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan African Bank, and MTN everywhere you go. And that's Business Life. Thanks for watching.